what is up dtube steam blockchain so today i want to talk a little bit about some thoughts about steam content rewards so so we what is this around two years since the all-time high around i think it was january the third the third where steam was eight dollars and um yeah, use some quick thoughts here about Steam uh, content rewards. So what's what's really interesting about when you're dealing with um, with a service like Steam is uh, if you look at value, for example, if one dollar in the real world is not really worth that much. Why is, it not, why is it not worth that much? Well, it's using you know, old technology that's not going to be exponential technology. It's not connected in that network. So yeah, it's, it's worth something, but it's not really worth that much. But if you take it in, in the crypto world, let's say a dollar on, um, on uh, a piece of content as a reward, that's actually worth a lot because that is playing in an ecosystem where you have tokens that have done 10,000x in 884 days that Ethereum did, or tokens take BNB token that did 400x in two years. And, then, and, and, and even like simple examples of tokens that go 5x in six months, we have been able to see that even in... Uh, in a beer market so to say uh so it's really interesting so that dollar that is playing in the new ecosystem and that is already in the ecosystem it doesn't have to go in and out because if you have to if you have to transfer value from the old system to the new system it's probably going to be like a 10 percent fee because fees everywhere used to transfer some quick value uh, yeah, it, it, it starts to add up. Just the Binance exchange, if you want to withdraw a Bitcoin, it takes like four and a half dollars. So it's like, it really starts to add up fast. So if you had a hundred dollars, probably like ten dollars goes away instantly. But when you already are earning value in the, in the new ecosystem, it's, it's, it's a little bit different because you don't have to go in and out. And you also have to structure in like if someone earns a fee of dollar in the real world, for them to move that value into the new ecosystem, they're probably not going to do it because it takes a lot of time and energy. They may not want to do that. But people that already have value in the new ecosystem, they already have something that can go up 5x, 10x, 100x, 1000x if um, they are in something that can uh, scale or that have marketing so one dollar is not really one dollar in 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 terms of steam content rewards if you look at it from the long term scale of you can also go down of course but if you look at the the general trend of the industry it seems like in the long term things tend to sort of uh, go up you can see, for example, that Steam's all-time low. Uh, at the moment, I think it's at, at around 16 cents, but at the all-time low was, I think, around 6 or 7 cents, and that was in 2017. So we haven't hit an all-time low since 2017, and in 11 months, it's going to be 2021. So that's going to be around uh, almost 3 three years later, three, four years later, three, three and a half years later, maybe, where it hasn't, it hasn't hit a new low. Of course, they can do a new low anytime. But if you look at the, like, the charts in, like, the current year, yeah, it went down, I think, a 3x. But you can see that the intensity of it going down is, um, it seems like it's kind of starting to level out a little bit. And then eventually markets usually find some form of bottom and then where can it go? Like it can only start to move up then, like if, if it hits the floor of something, it can only eventually then start to move up. Because people usually think that, well, I'm not going to talk about that. But yeah, so my base point is that Steam content rewards 
uh, they have so much upside potential that even let's let's say a person would earn like one cent on um, on a post, they earn one cent on a post. And if we consider how much Bitcoin went up, so I went and looked at the Bitcoin value from 2010, I think April 2010. And then it was around 0 0.005, uh, I think the value of one Bitcoin was. And if you look at it from, and then you look at 10 years later, the all time high peak, which was $20,000. It was not really, maybe exactly 10 years, maybe eight, maybe seven. But uh, if you look then, 20,000, uh, how much is that from 0 0.005? I think that was 4 million X. Maybe it might have been 2 million X, but I think it was 4 million X. So if it did go up 4 million X, and if we consider 1 cent, if let's say you earned like 1 cent in a Steam content reward. So let's do some simple math here. Let's say if 1 cent went, went up 4 million X. Uh, you are up in $40,000 from one cent. So it's really, really interesting how this ecosystem kind of works a little bit different. And it's very, very hard for humans to wrap their mind, I think, about these concepts of exponential growth, because usually we are not really used to that. We are just used to maybe see a few percentage a few percentage changes per year. For example, the inflation rate, I think it's at around 2% per year. So people have been like hardwired into that mode for decades. And to make them imagine concepts uh, of a 4 million X, it's uh, like the human almost cannot like really compute it because humans can only go from stuff from from their own like personal experience of things um and uh, they don't even know what uh, what that value sort of would mean for them because they have no experience of it so it's really really interesting to sort of consider steam con uh, or to have that in mind when you're considering steam content rewards how a value goes so much further or at least has the potential to go so much further now like that doesn't mean that it's going to but it, it's it's really really interesting to sort of have that in mind it's the same as with um with exponential technology if you look at like new smartphones so um if you look at how much a, a, a high-end smartphone actually cost, like the top of the line, let's say it costs like $1,000. No, it can be more, it can be less, but let's say it lasts for two years. I think that's around $1.6 per day to have like a high-end smartphone, like have the best computing device in the world. And is that really that much, like $1.6 per day? to have like the best computing device in the world especially now when the computing when the computing device is going to generate more value because you can earn tokens so this was something that was not available for the average person before because then you bought high-end device maybe use instagram maybe use facebook but you just use it as a general consumer you didn't really earn anything because what well, people should understand that on YouTube and people that's earning on Facebook, they're doing Facebook ads or like Twitter ads or Instagram ads. That that is that is usually a very very selective group. It's not the mainstream masses. But what these tokenization systems eventually opens up is for the mainstream masses to earn tokens just by being a token owner or a stakeholder or doing some basic content. And even if they can just do like one cent value here and there, that one cent can go up. As, as I did that, that with that example, if something had a similar chart, a chart of Bitcoin uh, and it did 4 million X, then that means that one cent 
can actually be $40,000. Uh, and if you look at it, like, obviously we see that this exponential curve of technology is like increasing in rate so if so something new probably would be able to outperform bitcoin because bitcoin at the moment candy crush saga 2020 has more adoption so no one is even so you don't even have any adoption and you still got the four million x that's pretty impressive but imagine if you had massive adoption and something that people loved and talked about all the time and everyone has high-end smartphone uh, and everyone is like connected to a network where everyone all co instantly always communicate with other people. Shouldn't that like exponentially be better than, than um, what Bitcoin did? Maybe a 20 million X. Who knows? Uh, now, obviously, it's very, very hard for humans to sort of imagine that those kind of numbers but um but yeah so so steam content rewards i never i always think it's going to be some kind of let's say uh, or at least for the upcoming years that it kind of in many ways works like a like a donation platform in many ways uh because i think that people are going to make so much more value from uh, these staking tokens or just be an owner tokens and that eventually like content rewards like it's going to be so affordable to create new content and and stuff like that so in many ways it may always be be like a like a donation sort of platform in many ways where the idea is that most people are probably going to earn most of their value from some other tokens that moons just because that's a better staking system or something like that but then value probably from those other systems staking systems and or like digital cash systems a lot of that value is going to drip back into these other systems for example steam because people i always think there's going to be like a market where people people sort of want to um, people want to reward stuff right people want to people people enjoy giving uh giving value away it's just that most people at the moment do not have access. It's, it's a little bit complex, get a Steam account, so on. But everyone really can, it's really, really cool with microtransactions because microtransactions are in a way, it's not really microtransactions. If you look at the long-term value of that, how it really, really, really can add up kind of fast, especially when everyone is like a digital owner so steam content rewards are are kind of interesting in that re in that regard that you can get access to exponentially higher rewards and uh and yeah so that's what i want to talk a little bit about today uh have a great day dtube and steam blockchain